the one thing about wrestling is that it's not just an athletic competition, mm. it's entertainment. And so in this entertaining side of it, you can't necessarily always choose your own destiny as mm. you could in a sport like baseball or you know, I guess you're still on a team, yeah. you know, you're still hinged to whatever the team does, but, but that sense of, uh, athletic accomplishment being directly tied to how successful you are in the sport mm. is not obviously the same as other sports in the WWE. So have you felt, um, I guess any, have you experienced that in any way? And if so, you know, what have you done or tried to do to, to change mm. that? Um, so I guess I would say that I felt that before we started New Day. Because like you said, so in any other sport, it's like, okay, uh, your success is measured by like, okay, did you guys win the Super Bowl? Did you win the World Series? And it's different for us because it's um, essentially, so talking about action movies, like if I got a role to be in a Jackie Chan movie and I'm not the star, I'm like bad guy A, like I'm not mad about that. I'm stoked because yeah. I'm part of a Jackie Chan movie. This is dope. So it's the same thing in WWE. Um, you might not be the person who has the ball right now, but you are a part of the show to make sure that that person becomes elevated enough so that we can create stories, we can create emotional content for people that are watching that. So then when it is your turn, if you reach that level, mm -hmm. people will be there to do that for you. Um, but I guess I would say that I felt that, like I said before, we started a new day because um, I had been with the company since 2010 and um, I was in uh, the developmental area and I wasn't on the main roster yet. Finally got to the main roster, wasn't really doing anything. And at this point, I felt like, you know, I'd been wrestling long enough where I trusted my instincts and um, I had, I'd been in like a, like mentally not in a good place. Um, and so uh, I was just kind of uh, just downtrodden, just kind of complaining about everything all the time. And then one of my friends, I'll never forget this. He, uh, he just told me, he's like, you know what, I'm, I'm really tired of you complaining about everything. And I was like, you know, when someone like is real with you, you kind of like get defensive for a second. And you're like, yeah. what? And he's like, no, listen. He's like, you've been complaining about the same stuff for like three years. Shut up and do something about it. So that's when it kind of hit me like, oh, I, I should just quit, quit whining and actually like make a move rather than kind of waiting for things to happen. Just say, rather than saying like, hey, hello, I have arrived for work. I would like to do a good job, please. Like, kick in the door and say this is what I want to do if you don't want to do that then I'll roll so um it's kind of a, a thing of like betting on yourself and so that's when I approached uh Ian e Kofi and was like hey I got this idea I want to do this Kofi obviously already established one of the most decorated humans to ever come through WWE um E had just come off being I think uh intercontinental champion and I hadn't done anything but got beat up by a ton of people I'd been there for a few months and so my thought was um, I have this idea for this group. I want to try it out. If it doesn't work and it just fails, like that's on me and I shouldn't be here because my idea didn't work. Cause that would prove to me that I don't know what I'm doing mm -hmm. and I should be doing something else. I should go and use my degree. I should start working with some psychologists and just talk to people about their problems. Um, and then, and then luckily it, it worked out. And, um, when we, when they let us make the group, we were, we were good guys for the industry terms, we were baby faces. <laughs> uh, and we thought we should be bad guys, heels. And so um, after a while, some things happened and people were chanting like, New Day sucks. And it's like, okay, yes, cool. They'll let us like turn a corner and we can be bad guys now. And um, they thought that uh, since Kofi had been a uh, baby face for so long that they wouldn't boo him. And so to me, I was like, no, like we're in control of that. Like I guarantee you, if, like we went to Vince McMahon and I was like, if, if you give us, if you give me, a microphone four weeks in a row, I guarantee you that they'll boo Kofi Kingston. And he was like, you really believe in this that much? I said, yes, I, I believe that I can do it. And, um, and he goes, four weeks. And if you don't do it in four weeks, what happens? I said, if I don't do it in four weeks, and you've got 60 dudes in developmental that deserve this spot more than I do. He's like, so I can send you home and get rid of you. I was, like, then, I was like, you should if I can't do it. If I can't make good on this, then I don't deserve to be here. He's like, all right. That's high stakes. Yeah. Well, like at, at that point, I feel like I had done everything that I could do and I still wasn't, um, I, was, I wasn't getting opportunities on TV. Like, I was like, oh, but you know, like I know how to wrestle. Like I've got like crazy hair. Like my gear is really cool. Like I've done everything like that quote unquote, you're like supposed to do. Uh, but you realize that doing what you're supposed to do only gets you so far. Mm -hmm. you, you can't go down swinging somebody else's punches. You have to swing your own punches. So like if it wouldn't have worked, 
I wouldn't be one of uh, the people who, whether you get fired from like any job, you know how you hear some people get fired and they just complain about the job. And it's like, sometimes like, when does personal responsibility come into play? Like, what did you do to not advance yourself enough? That's a super powerful mindset to have. Yeah, I feel like it's, and like I said, it took me a long time to get there. And it wasn't until my friend kind of kicked me in the face and told me that. And so, uh, so it's like, finally did everything. And, and uh, like at week three, they booed Kofi a little bit. And after that, we were, we were cool. Like uh, they told us, okay, cool. We you guys are, are bad guys now. <laughs> and we just ran with it. And uh, luckily it worked. It was just like, like you said, it was the, the ridiculous nut level. The ridiculousness level was at an all time high. Yeah. Cause we were just trying to go for like shock and awe and trying to see what we could get away with. And that's when we like acquired a trombone and it was just like, what, what is happening right now? And like I said, we just wanted to be a fever dream. And so uh, luckily we, we got the opportunity to do that, but it was because we, we quit complaining and just took a risk. Cause like I said, if we would have swung this punch and got completely knocked out, then it's like, okay, that's on me. I now know that I'm meant to do something else. Mm. But I think that sometimes, a lot of times, most of the time, uh, we as humans are, are it's, it's a scary thing to do. Yeah, so it's a leap of faith. And I think that it's, it's, it's harder to take a leap of faith in yourself than it is in something or someone else sometimes. Yeah. Because you realize you, you're the only one who can, who can own that. You know for the rest of your life, like this happened because I made this choice. And so you have to become okay with that before you're able to take that jump. 